Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we'll be talking about the things I wish I knew or things you're supposed to know before learning programming. But before that, let's take a look at my intro. Hello and welcome to my channel again. My name is Festus. I make videos like this that will help you navigate the tech industry or help you if you're a student chasing a tech degree to navigate the life as a student in the university chasing that tech degree. So today, like I said earlier, I'll be sharing my two cents, like a friend of mine always says, or you could say my tips on what you should know before you, before you start learning programming, basically. So let's dive straight into it. So point number one is choosing a language. Now the reason why this is coming as point number one is because this is something you really want to get right and this is something you need to know before you actually jump in. So in choosing a language, you want to make sure that you understand the several parts and several directions in software development. Basically, you need to know what platform you're targeting and it's always advisable to start with one that really interests you. So say for instance, I want to build solutions for the web. I want to be a web developer. Then I'll be looking at programming languages that are focused and used for that particular direction. But then again, I could decide I want to do, say for instance, mobile development. There is a catch in choosing a programming language. You want to choose one that is affordable because all of these have different requirements when it comes to hardware. If you decide you want to be a mobile developer and you're deciding you want to build solutions for iOS, for instance, you cannot use a Windows computer to build that. So that is a hindrance, that's it, there's a catch. So you want to be sure you're choosing the language that suits the particular one or platform that interests you, but you have to also ensure that it's affordable and available to you. We've talked about choosing a language. Now let's assume you've chosen a particular language, say Python, JavaScript, or whatever there is out there. The next thing you want to know is, or the next thing you have to deal with is getting resources, because of course you need somewhere to learn. Now this is the mistake that many people make. I also made that mistake. In getting resources, you want to make sure that you test the waters. What do I mean by this? You want to make sure that you get resources on YouTube and other platforms that are for free. Because the one mistake you make is you're thinking, okay, I need something that is really good. And then you jump into maybe paying for Udemy courses, Pluralsight, and all of those particular, those platforms. And then at the end of the day, you realize or it dawns on you that you're actually wasting money because let's face, let's face it, it is actually difficult to learn programming. And the worst thing people hate is giving it a lot of effort and you notice that it's either going slowly or you find other people building something that is magical and you can build it. That, at that particular point, if you've been buying courses, there is this psychology behind it. You start thinking, okay, I'm wasting too much money. But you don't actually have to do that if you can just jump straight in and start with free resources. So that's it for point number two. Point number three is avoiding tutorial purgatory. Now this is a terminology used in the tech industry, I mean tutorial purgatory, for someone who just keeps learning, someone who just goes on and on an endless loop of learning. So say you watch uh, a Udemy course of how to build an e-commerce site, you finish building it, and then you go the next day, you're watching a YouTube video of how to build a Facebook clone and the next week you're building a Netflix clone. That is tutorial purgatory. Now, how does that affect you? It affects you because you get so used to coding along someone and not actually give yourself the time to be able to use that particular, particular knowledge to build your own thing. It's more like you're getting a lot of knowledge, but you're not trying to build an experience. And that doesn't really help you. I did suffer with this because it probably took me a year before I could, you know, break out of that and start building exciting projects by myself. Point number four. Now I do know I've said that tutorial purgatory is not good, but that doesn't mean that you have to stop learning. In this field, you have to keep learning. As much as you want to run away from tutorials, 
as early as you can, you also want to make sure that you keep learning. So say for instance, I watch a tutorial where someone built, say, it's really common these days, to-do list. Now, I could be fascinated by, you know, maybe adding the language translation feature to it. In this case, maybe I could just Google up some, you know, blog post and all that to learn, to know the approach to deal with this. In this case, you're learning, but you're not subjecting yourself to watch that particular tutorial or watching videos on and on and on like that. So that's it for this point. And next, we'll be looking at point number five, which is consistency. Now, like everything in life, you want to make sure you keep repeating it, you keep repeating it. And as they say, you keep going to the barber shop and one day you might just get a haircut for free. So you keep doing this and keep doing this. And that's actually the one secret to being a master in programming, to mastering programming. Because at the end of the day, uh, yeah, many people actually ask this question to a lot of a lot of us. Myself, I also get that question a lot. How do you remember the syntax? How do you know what to type? The truth is, you never do. You just get so used to it that when you start typing, you remember this is this, that is that. I did this in my previous project like this. I did that in my previous project like that. In most cases, you're not even writing new code. But because you've done this stuff consistently, you're able to remember a project that you might have used this particular feature and that helps you in building your present solution for that particular problem. Now, lastly, the last point, and which is, this is actually the most important of all, especially when you're a newbie. The truth is, you're never ever going to be able to go from one day to the last 365th day of the year coding. There, has, there are obviously days that you feel weak or you're too busy because you have some other things in your life that needs your attention. Now, the one tip I would give to you is as much as you want to stay consistent and still be able to attend to other things in your life, there is only one way you can ensure that you're really active without actually missing a day, and that is reading code daily. Now, you don't necessarily need one hour. You don't need two hours. You don't even need... 20 minutes to read code. You probably just need 10 minutes. But then the one thing it does for your head, for your mind, is that you're able to see the difference between your code and other people's code. You're able to understand that particular programming language better because you read a lot of code. And that actually helps you in growing fast. So guys, recapping on all I've said and putting it in a summary, you need to know all of this. One, you need to choose a programming language that matches the path you wish to follow. Two, you need to get resources and ensure that you start with the free ones to boost you, your efforts and your motivation before you, you know, force money and use money to buy some expensive course. Three, avoid tutorial purgatory. You keep learning from someone and that hinders you from using that knowledge in building an experience. And again, no employer wants an employee with no experience. No one cares about you, you, you building 20 projects if you cannot explain or use that particular, particular knowledge to build something else. Four, always keep learning. Never stop. As much as you want to avoid tutorial purgatory, keep learning through blog posts, question and answer sites like Stack Overflow and the rest. Five, consistency. And the last, you have to read code daily. That's it for today, guys. See you next week.